everybody, it's Ashley from Ashley's Green Life, and today's screen tip is how to make your own homemade natural deodorant. So, why would you even want to make deodorant in the first place on your own? Um, and you can just buy it at the store, and it's fine. Um, and the, the reason is that mainly, along with most of the things you'll hear me talk about on my blog and my channel here, is that some of the personal care products we usually use actually aren't safest for us. So, Deodorant is a prime example. Um, the main culprit in deodorant is aluminum. So if you look at the back of most standard deodorants, that's or antiperspirants and deodorants, um, you're going to see aluminum as one of the main ingredients. And that's because aluminum does a great job of um, acting as the antiperspirant, so stopping the sweat. Fortunately, um, we don't really want to stop our sweat because that's how our body detoxes. And when we plug those pores, it just kind of leads to the blockage. Um, one downside. Second downside is that you can start to gain an aluminum toxicity in your body with the aluminum buildup. So that could lead to things like Alzheimer's and even cancers, and specifically for women, breast cancer, since it's so close to that area. So we want to kick aluminum to the curb, and I did for a while. I um, switched from my regular deodorant, which had aluminum, to just a natural, organic, um, aluminum-free deodorant, and it worked great and fine. But I love to be frugal and I love to go green as much as I can and save money. So this is a natural deodorant recipe that I found. There's tons on the internet. This is probably a common one you might have even seen already. And I'm just going to show you how I make it. And it only used three ingredients, so that's a perk. Um, the first one is coconut oil, which has antibacterial properties to it, so that's great. I love coconut oil. I use it for all kinds of things. You can probably find it at a local health food store. And another ingredient is baking soda, so that's going to also add to the antimicrobial properties of it and work to help with the deodorant aspect of it. So we've got baking soda. And the last ingredient is arrowroot powder. Some natural deodorants you may find call for cornstarch, but I found, um, well actually I never even tried that, I just kind of saw some of the reviews that people said that they felt stinging or irritation from it, and I'm just naturally a sensitive skin type person. so. I skipped that and just went straight to arrowroot powder and never had a problem. So this is just a natural thickener. Um, it, some people say that this can lead to having a tiny bit of antiperspirant properties in the deodorant, but um, mainly this is just a deodorant recipe. So you'll find that you're still going to be sweating, um, it just it probably won't be as much. And again, that's natural for our bodies to do. So we've got our arrowroot powder, you'll probably have to find that at a local health food store. Um, Bob's Red Mill is the brand that I use. I usually just put all mine in these mason jars. I love mason jars and uh, get a little label on it. So let's get started with how to make our natural deodorant. All right, so to get started, we're just gonna need a mixing bowl and our ingredients measured out. And the thing I love about this recipe is that it's one fourth a cup of all three ingredients. So we're gonna start by putting our one fourth a cup arrowroot powder into the bowl. Followed by one fourth a cup of the baking soda, and then I kind of give those a little stir. And then next is going to come the one fourth a cup of coconut oil. So you might have to use a spoon or something to get this one out. I keep my coconut oil as it is from the jar or the container. Some people have melted theirs. I tried a melted version and it comes out pretty much the same, but it made my deodorant, I found a little harder, so I kind of like this one that it was a little softer. All right, so now that we have the coconut oil in there, this is the most complicated step is we're just gonna start mixing it up. And it's not gonna mix super nice as it would if it was already melted, but you gotta have patience, just stick with it. <laughs> it's gonna seem like you need to add more. I'm with you. That's what I thought the first time I made it, but you just got to keep stirring it. We're going to kind of try to push it together with the back of your spoon. Cream it, as probably a fancy chef would say, um, and just keep stirring it. All right, so I'm still stirring it. As you can tell, it looks nothing like a deodorant of any kind. But don't worry, just keep stirring. It will get there. So we'll start to pack together, and we'll have deodorant soon. All right, so we're getting really close to the end here. You can tell it's starting to really pack together. And it's almost done. So I just start to cream it like this. Just rub it with the back of the spoon. And 
kind of get it into a big clump if you can. All right, so there's our finished product, the deodorant. All right, so for, to store our deodorant, we're going to use, well, I use a four ounce little jelly mason jar here. I find it fits the recipe perfect, and it helps keep it fresh. So now we're just gonna transfer it from the bowl into the jelly jar. And you can tell it's nice and soft, which is something that I like about this recipe. It makes it easier for application. So yeah, we're just gonna put it in there off and we're ready to go with your homemade deodorant. Alright so to apply the deodorant I kind of take it since it's soft on my fingers like this and then you just kind of rub it into your armpit let it melt a little bit while it's in there. Rub it around so it gets all the areas and then you go to the next side. So you'll end up getting two fingers messy with the deodorant but really it's not that bad and you can use a little bit less or a little bit more depending upon however you are. I just like to make sure it's all rubbed in and sometimes I'll even wait a few minutes after I apply it before I put my shirt on um, just so I don't get any residue on it and then I get ready to wash my hands and wash all the coconut oil off. So that's all it. Alright, so that is how we make our own homemade natural deodorant. Um, some things to remember with this deodorant is that since it uses coconut oil, the consistency might vary. So if you are in a really warm climate, it might be very liquidy, which is still okay. It makes it really easy to apply. Um, but if you're in somewhere that's really cold, it might be more like rock solid, uh, it might be a little bit harder to apply. So you could um, rub it in your fingers like I showed on how to apply it, or, um, or if you would like to, if, if you don't like it um, super liquidy whenever it's warm, you could keep it in the fridge. So whatever works for you is fine. Um, some other recipes I've seen online use various essential oils for scents. You could use tea tree oil or lavender or any scent that floats your boat. Um, personally, I don't like scents. I'm just super sensitive, so I keep mine pretty mild with this. I just love the coconut. Tiny hint of the coconut smell is great. Um, and you want to be careful with essential oils that you add. It could irritate your skin. Um, so I think that wraps up how to make your own homemade natural deodorant. I hope you can give this recipe a try. It costs less than a dollar per batch to make. So, I mean, you're paying for itself very easily with this instead of having to buy um, you know, stick after stick at the store and you're decreasing your um, toxic load with all the aluminum and everything else that comes in traditional deodorant. So I hope that you enjoy this tip and I'll see you next time for the next green tip. Bye.